Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. This time we're going to be looking at bayonet charge, which hopefully will close the conflict cluster for us. So we start off then with structure and we're looking first of all at the similar length of the stanzas. And that gives us the idea that everything mentioned in each, the different focuses or foci, sorry, are just as important as each other. So in the first one, we have a very physical feel. We know how hot he is, how sweaty he is, his actual actions, what he's hearing around him, etc. And uh, the, the physical representation of his patriotism. Moving on to the second one, then it's more mental. There we hear that he's bewildered and he's got these thoughts coming through. And he's actually got these fears invading his mind as well as physical actions, but the focus has shifted slightly. And then lastly, we move on to some of the actions, but the most important focus is down the bottom here, where we're looking at the philosophical elements, the um, the reasons why a person would do this or uh, any soldier would do this or not do certain things in a situation. And uh, all these items are dismissed here for the in exchange really for the desperate need to survive uh, is what really what really gets him going. So you've got the three different uh, levels and the rep represented in the three stanzas and that's why they're all as equal as each other. We've also got the hyphen or dash, whichever you prefer to call it, used to show a dramatic jump in focus. That's used quite a lot. So here we hear about him running and then it shifts to the physicality. Here we hear about him uh, listening or, or being aware of this and then how he just kind of quickly pacing through. Here we hear about his patriotism and then we see like he just suddenly nearly stops or really slows down and then it switches again to his mind. So the dash there really allows us to switch focus uh, dramatically very quickly and keep the pace because there's a lot of pace here in the in the poem and trying to get across that this is all happening in a few seconds and that's conveyed to us through the fact that there's very few full stops to allow us to, to sorry to allow us to keep going um last point i want to make on this even though there are dozens more it's just or actually there's several more is starting with suddenly starting with suddenly is very dramatic it's um a very fast opening that puts the reader in the scene straight away and the immediacy and danger that he is under is given to us all in one word without needing to expand upon it and when we, even when we do expand upon it, we know his mentality from the off, which allows us then to change and focus on the change in mentality. So starting that way really sets us up for, for what comes next. So we move on then to the meanings. We've got the tense situation on the battlefield. He is being shot at. Or he's running at a hedge that's... Um, dazzled with rifle fire that dazzled with rifle fire so he's being shot at and all his men are being shot at and a lot of them being killed there's something to be said here for ted hughes's dad who survived a certain battle and he was one of only like 15 or 17 survivors i know the numbers were i think i remember the number was less than 20 of a certain war and ted hughes commented quite often on how it always lingered with him so we can imagine these being his father's stories that are actually coming through here and and uh his his experience experiences and uh, that that makes it all the more powerful all the more real even though he's an experience in himself he experienced this himself we can imagine his father did and uh, the stories and tales were passed on to to him so the tense situation on the battlefield there and then the impending death available on the battlefield you know at every moment we've got it there with the hair um, which has been injured and is about to die and its uh, mouth is wide open silent and its eyes standing out it's just it's just about to die so yeah the tense situation and why the tension is actually there the reminder of death and the death of the people around him we see as well the instincts um of him stopping you know obviously he, that's the worst time for him to choose to stop so we know that's actually done by instinct and then he plunges past it when he's got the reminder of death he just it, it makes him pick up and get a move on again so he just flies on so the instincts there of human nature the wanting to survive are highlighted we've got the futility of war in that this is not really how he should be living his life and he's got this rifle um, numb as a smashed arm which shows how unnatural it is to him and he's got this um, you know he, he's had to change himself he's got almost like an iron like center in his heart but whereas anyone normal or anyone who 
wasn't trained to fight etc probably would have found this even more difficult um you may have given up in some way and that touches upon the futility of war because someone here has to die you know even if he survives then and we champion that we have to remember at the same time whoever he's charging at with the bayonet has to die for him to stay alive or at least the majority of them have to die for him to stay alive so that's highlighting the futility of war and then we've got the real reasons to fight here when he actually stops and thinks about what's going on and uh, you know the situation he's in it gives us one focus but then down the end here he plunged past with a bayonet towards a green hedge king honor human dignity etc dropped like luxuries in a yelling arm so these are all things that people would fight for you know the idea that well you know we need to uphold human dignity because the other side's evil and you know we have to do the right thing here you've got the idea of well it's honorable to fight for your country and obviously the king it's really champion to fight for your king or your queen or you know your country etc 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 so all these ideas that some people hold really at certain points what Ted Hughes could be saying is that there comes a point when actually for some people it's just it's about life or death wanting to live wanting to die and that's why they kill and fight in war um, at this given moment obviously it's not necessarily a reason why they get into the war in the first place but that's that's in this situation then it's um, it's 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 very relevant that those aren't his real reasons to fight and the use of the word etc after that just kind of dismisses them just kind of like oh yeah a long list blah 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 and that's what the etc does there but obviously does it a lot better so we move on then to the images it's uh, very interesting to see him here at the beginning stumbling because when we actually get the idea of him running uh, there and um whether well, he's carrying a gun etc it's not this heroic gallop across a field it's this awkward bumpy stumbling which again just really lowers and the fact that it's actually supported by the fact that he's in he's really sweaty and his um, his clothes are raw seamed etc it really lowers the, any of the glory in here this is very messy this is very uncomfortable this is um almost like i wouldn't say unhuman but it's not really what humans are designed to do so we're looking there at something that that gives a very strong image of him being in a less than optimal situation um, the image also of him listening between the footfalls, that's really good because it gives us a clear way of seeing his thought process or how much this means to him here or how much he actually stops because in stopping and listening to his own feet uh, or at least alluding to that, to, to doing that or making it seem like that long has passed, we get to take in his situation as he takes in his situation which makes the reader empathise uh, more. A uh, lovely image of the hair. So the hair uh, shoots out of this um, furrow, uh, you know, that's covered in shots, and it's presumably been shot, and it's just about to die, and it's crawling through, and it crawls to the threshing circle, and then it's mouth wide and open and silent. It's an st uh, st uh, eye standing out. It's dropping dead or just dropped dead, and uh, that gives us the image that we need of death, which actually shoots him into action and plunges him back into action and we've got the image of patriotism so we've got the idea here even though it you know it's dismissed in the final stanza we've still got the idea being represented to us of the patriotic tear that he it, look, it could look to someone like you know he's crying and we could tell he's crying because he's so scared he's crying because he's so worried but it could be taken as well that you know I'm desperate to, to, to kill for my king and my country and my honor, etc., etc. And the the it's further emphasized by the the molten iron from the center of his chest, you know, linking to his heart and how powerful he he oh sorry the lengths he will go to and how strong he will be for all those causes, etc. If they are what he's fighting for, if we look at it that way at least for that section looking at the language we've got a great use we've got great use sorry of techniques so we've got he lugged the rifle as numb as a smashed arm we've got the simile there that's really important because it gives us the dehumanization of his body his part of his extension of his body now is this killing machine and although we can kill with our bare hands obviously we're not going to kill as efficiently as a, as a rifle and so it's just something that he drags around with him if we had a smashed arm then again we wouldn't be optimum in our performance or in our actions and having the gun with him is 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 a, is a hindrance on his humanity not necessarily on his moving because he's trained to move with that but on his humanity and the fact that he's going to kill people is definitely a 
a, uh, a reduction of his humanity. Um, other techniques then, we've got lovely alliteration at the end. His terror is touchy dynamite. The thing that will set him off is really, really emphasized. We've also got a list of three, king on a human dignity, which emphasizes all the things and dismisses them all at the same time. And we've also got uh, rolled like a flame, which gives us the idea of the speed. And there's loads of other things that you can you can pick out there for for the techniques. Uh, one that I liked in particular was the shot slashed. Um, I really like that because it refers here to the rabbit, but the kind of the cutting uh, movement that goes along with it, it or, the, or the cutting emphasis that actually come along with it is is also like a cutting into his humanity because he's looking at he's in a situation where he could die he's looking at a rabbit or hair sorry that's just died and it's been slashed you know the life has been slashed out of it and he's in a situation where his humanity is being slashed out, slashed out of him because of what he actually has to do uh, furthermore I think it links to the people that would be around because he'll be looking around or he'll be running past and he'll be finding uh, an immense amount of numbers, a very large amount of numbers of people who are also completely riddled with bullets and, and dead, although this is what he chooses to focus on at this, or this is what his mind invites him to focus on at a given time. Uh, the use of the word plunged is also very strong because it shows the desperation and shows how necessary his next move is and that he plunges like you dive into a pool you just completely throw and immerse yourself into something and I think it's really important that we pick out all the oral descriptions in here the things that are actually appealed to our ears so when we start at the beginning we've got the rifle fire we've got the sound of that and the bullets smack the belly out of the air so the, the air the, I mean a way of reading this really would mean that the air has um, the, you know the air is really being um squeezed or just kind of frantically pressed with all this with all these bullets um so that's one way of looking at it so it's it's again things that we're hearing in both and then later on we've got him listening to his footsteps or the idea of him listening between his footsteps and then the um yelling alarm and the blue crackling in the air so there's lots of uh, description to actually get the sound across to us and we've got the lovely contrast where we've got the silence of the hair as it's dying or just died and that's important because that's what he sees and maybe that's one of the things that actually gives him the contrast for all the shock and suffering and, and horror he's in the power of the silence just seeing something's life end in front of you through and obviously through its silence as well really makes him want to live another day and take charge <coughs> and make sure that he does actually get to do stuff so the effect on the reader then well we're looking at trench warfare so we're thinking about how how dehumanizing this was uh, what a great loss of life was actually involved in it and obviously the sacrifice of those who, who were in it it makes us think about also what gives us courage you know what will make us do certain things at certain times like seeing the hair dead here made this man actually get running running and going and we think about the detachment that comes across to us in a in opportune time sometimes when people are having a go at us we can just detach or when we're watching something violent we can just detach so here in this situation although it doesn't seem like the person has chosen to detach in the middle here he detaches as well so it just gets us thinking about why people People detach from certain situations and part of that is to do with you know so we can deal with it better part of it's to do with well we're not really caring and then part of it's to do with the fact that sometimes it's it's the best way we can uh, we can manage to not only deal with something but live with it so detaching at the moment is, is is a better way of of living with something as well as just getting through it at that at that moment so yeah really really excellent really vivid deep poem that's worth reading uh, many times over and uh, i hope that was useful